first time we used the F-65, we were able to demonstrate dynamic range. We were able to demonstrate the, the superiority of the 4K spatial resolution. And that, that does matter in terms of storytelling. If you particularly want to have uh, subtle texture details and be able to have that definition in conjunction with dynamic range. The difference between when we shot The Arrival and when we, were, when we shot El Dorado is that we now have the ability to use the 16-bit um, SR memory uh, recording capability, which uh, enables us to capture everything that the camera can output. When we started grading uh, El Dorado, what was particularly interesting was having the uh, flexibility of the 16-bit image that we captured from the camera in an ACES workflow, which enabled us to take full advantage of the um, subtle color transitions and the color palette, particularly on the exteriors and the Valley of Fire scenes. Um, because it has such pastel colors and it was able to reproduce those colors in a very, very subtle, uh, graceful way and extended palette that I think uh, was indicative of what you're able to do with 16-bit color. So whether we're dealing with the more saturated colors that existed in the Las Vegas scenes, the more primary, vivid, richer, saturated colors, the interesting contrast was how it handled those colors so effectively in addition to in conjunction with the more subtle uh, pastel color palette that exists in the Valley of Fire. I think the, the dynamic of that color rendering was enabled by the fact that we had 16-bit color to begin with. And one of the most remarkable things about the F-65 is that it was designed from the ground up to take full advantage of the ACES workflow, which is uh, an innovative approach that's going to enable filmmakers to retain the integrity of the images that they capture from their digital sources and or film scans and be able to protect that image dynamic range, the color bit depth, uh, throughout the entire workflow process to be able to have maximum creative possibilities for the project that they're working on. In other projects with, you know, other camera formats, you know, there's always a process. You know, whatever you acquire on, you have to switch it to get it into editorial. And the easier that process is, you know, in the beginning, makes getting dailies a lot quicker. and also means going back to the conform process and marrying back to that 16-bit raw easily. And I think with this project, with everything dialed in, with the SR memory and everything, it worked perfectly. One of the great features of the F-65 is extremely low noise. And having the low noise in the, uh, all the different color channels with a full resolution in the green channel, the blue channel is extremely quiet, making uh, low light shadows, especially uh, evening shots and low lights, are uh, extremely clean. I've looked at all the different digital capture cameras, done a lot of testing on all of them, done a lot of movies with all of them, and they all try to rival film, and I, I found the F-65 to be the only one that not only rivals, but surpasses film in a lot of ways. Using the ultimate arm, and the F-65 with its R4 on board recorder uh, was a perfect combination. Uh, the complexity of the shot required that we have the right balance on the head and the arm so that we can actually do very, very complex maneuvers. And in fact, I think the size of the camera is particularly good for Steadicam and Ultimate Arm because if the camera is too small for Steadicam, it can be a little problematic in terms of balance. So the weight distribution of the F-65 with the R4 on Steadicam I think works particularly well. It's a new terrain, it's a new frontier, it's something that uh, you know changes our landscape and opens up options that hitherto we have not had. So I'm very excited about that. Mm -hmm.